All right, good morning, Algebra. And uh, today is the last lesson of Chapter 6. 6-6, um, six, six, Solving Systems of Inequalities. Take a moment to get out a, uh, a second writing utensil. I think that'll help as we go through some of the examples today. If you have like a red and a blue or a pencil and a pen or um, just some way, uh, we've kind of done this before when we have two different colors to, uh, to be able to look at, at things that we're doing on the same graph without getting confused between the, the two items that we're graphing. Um, pause there for a minute if you need to and uh, get two different colored writing utensils. But we'll just start off with some examples. We are working with linear inequalities, which we have graphed before. I'll back, uh, we, we spent a lot of time on this in Chapter 5, so um, this should be fairly familiar, hopefully. Um, but we need to graph, uh, graph the two inequalities. And we're going to graph this first one in red. So um, y is less than or equal to 2x plus 1, and it's in slope-intercept form already. Um, and all we need to be able to graph something is just the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope of this one is 2, and the y-intercept is 1. So we would mark the y-intercept 1, and we would go up to right 1 for the slope. And we have to look at the symbol to know what type of line we need, whether it's going to be a solid line or a dashed line. And um, since it has the equal sign, it needs to be a solid line when we graph it. And so it will look like this, more or less. And then the last thing we have to do when we graph an inequality is we have to shade one direction or the other because one side of the inequality will be true and one side will be false. Um, there were two ways that we did this. One way was that we chose an ordered pair to substitute into the inequality and check to see if it's true or not. So we always check 0, 0 if we can. The line doesn't go through 0, 0, so we can check 0, 0. So put a 0 in for y. We're checking the ordered pair, 0, 0. Um, we put a 0 in for y, and then we put a, um, a 0 in for x, so 2 times 0 plus 1. And then when you solve that all out at 0 is less than or equal to 1. And that's true, so we would shade to that side. The other thing that we also talked about was when it's in slope-intercept form like this, um, if it's a less than sign, less than means below the line. So if you think about shading below this red line, it would be on this side over here. So um, however you want to think of it is fine. If you want to test a, uh, test a point on the graph or if you just want to look at the symbol, that's fine as well. So after we graph the first inequality, we need to graph the second one. I'm going to switch to blue, and um, we'll graph this one. So for this second inequality, we also need the slope and the y-intercept. The slope is 1 half, and the y-intercept is negative 1. And so all we would do then is graph y-intercept right there, and the slope is up 1, right 2. And for this one, since it does not have an equal sign, it just needs to be da uh, graphed with a dotted or a dashed line. And so it would look like that. Then we look at the symbol. It's a greater than symbol, so we want to shade in blue above this line. And the solution then to this set of inequalities, the solution is just this area right here. The solution is the area that's graphed, or that's shaded, sorry, um, by both graphs. It makes both inequalities true, I guess I should say. So that's the part that we're most worried about. It's okay to go ahead and have this part shaded, you know, the one color, and this part down here is shaded just one color, but there should be a part that overlaps that has um, shading with both colors on it. That's the part that we're interested in. There's not a special way that we need to write it like there was, like there is for um, the solutions to, to um, systems of equations when we write the answers as ordered pairs or whatever. Um, for, this, for this lesson, the shading 
the shaded area is the solution. And so when I grade these, I'll look to see that you have the lines drawn properly and that you have the, sh you know, the dashed line or the dotted line or the, the solid line. I'll look to see that your shading is all right, but the most uh, important part of this graph is the part where the shading overlaps. Okay? Um, so I feel like, because we did a lot of graphing inequalities in the last chapter, this all should be fairly familiar. I'm going to go ahead and work through quite a few examples uh, just to give you a refresher on all of this. But really, there's not much that's new in this lesson as far as like um, new concepts. It's just that we're doing two inequalities at the same time on one graph and, and looking to see where the shading overlaps. All right, let's move on and look at some more examples. First one we'll graph here in, in blue, or, uh, red, I guess. Y is, um, y is less than or equal to 3. And so this looks a little bit different than our typical slope-intercept equation. If you think about what the slope is and what the y-intercept is, well, the y-intercept is 3, but then there's no x value, so the slope must be 0. And we've got to put, um, mark our y-intercept right there, and a slope, a line with a slope of 0 is just a horizontal line. And since it has the equal sign, we'll give it a solid line right there where y is 3. And it tells us that y is less than 3, so we need to shade this part below the line. All right. The next inequality here will graph in blue. But before I can graph it, I need to do something. I've got to get it into slope-intercept form so that I can know what the slope and the y-intercept is. So the first, uh, first thing I need to do is just subtract x from both sides. And then I've got y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 1. So now I can see that the slope is negative 1 and the y-intercept is positive 1. So there's the y-intercept. The slope is up 1, left 1. Looks something like that. And since it's got the equal sign, we'll graph it with a solid or a, a solid line. And since it is y is greater than, it's going to shade above the blue line. So that's this area, the part that I'm most concerned about seeing shaded, is this part where they overlap. Okay. Um, Let's do the next one. 2x plus y is greater than or equal to 2, and 2x plus y is less than 4. Um, first thing we need to do for both of these equations is get them into slope-intercept form. So this top one, I would subtract 2x from both sides. Now would end up with y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 2. So the slope is negative 2, and the y-intercept is positive 2. There's my y-intercept. Slope is up 2, left 1. It has the equal sign, so it would be a solid line when I graph it. Be about right there. And it is, y is greater than negative 2x plus 2. So I would shade on this side. Oops. And then I'll do this equation in red. So again, subtract 2x. So y is less than negative 2x plus 4. So the slope is negative 2 and the y-intercept is 4. Y-intercept is right here and the slope is down to right 1. <clears throat> so um, this one does not have an equal sign so I need to give a dashed line here, dotted line. That 
it's not a very good line, but you get the picture. And this one is y is less than, so it would shade to the left of the red line. Now if you'll notice, the part where they overlap, the shaded area that is the solution, really is just this little strip right through here that's between the lines, right? Because we shaded on this side of the blue line and on this side of the red line. So the part that overlaps is just that one little tiny strip through there. Um, so that's the part that you need to make sure has both colors in it. I didn't get a good job of showing the blue in there. So do that. So it's got the red and the blue shaded just in that little area right there. Um, and that part shows the solution of the two, uh, of the two inequalities. All right, let's keep on going here. Um, Next, we've got these two, so we need to, once again, we've got to get them into slope-intercept form. So this top equation I'll do in blue, I'm going to subtract x. So that would be y is greater than negative x plus 2. Um, the slope is negative 1, y-intercept is 2. It has a dotted line since it doesn't have the equal sign with it. And it is great, uh, it is greater. Once you look at the slope intercept form here, at y is greater, so it shades on this side. Now I'll switch to the other inequality. So this one's going to be in red. I need to add 4x to both sides. So that is 2y is less than uh, 4x plus 8. Divide both sides by 2. So y is less than 2x plus 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I guess I can write this down. Slope is 2, and the y-intercept is 4. 2, 3, 4 is right here, and then a slope of 2 would look like this. Once again, it does not have the equal sign, so it'll be a dashed line. y is less than, so it's going to shade beneath the red line. So that means this area right here is the area that overlaps. That's the area that I'm most concerned about having shaded in a way that, that uh, really shows to me the, the solution to the inequality. Okay. Got a couple more examples to work through here. Um, let's do this one. 3x minus y is greater than or equal to 2. I'll subtract 3x from both sides here. So that is negative y is greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 2. Can't have a negative y. So we need to multiply this system or this inequality by negative 1. That'll be a positive y when we multiply by a negative. What happens to this symbol? has to flip, so it'll be less than or equal to positive 3x minus 2. Multiplied everything in this equation by negative 1, so it changed all of the symbols. Slope is going to be 3, y-intercept is negative 2. So here's the y-intercept, slope is up 3, right 1. And it is, needs to be a solid line because it's got the equal sign. <clears throat> All right, we'll do the next, next one right here. So subtract 3x again. 
negative y is less than negative 3x minus 5. Same thing with this one. We've got to multiply by negative 1. So it's positive y is greater than positive 3x plus 5. Just realized I forgot to shade my last one. I'm going to go back to this last one. So I forgot to shade for the blue equation here, for the blue inequality. It's less than, so it shades below the blue line on this side. Now, back to the red one here. So y is greater than 3x plus 5. Whoops. Red. There we go. Slope is 5. Y-intercept is... Wow, I did that backwards. Sorry about that. Slope is 3, and the y-intercept is 5. Um, here we go. So the y-intercept is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's right here. And the slope is 1, 2, 3, down 3, your left 1. And it does not have the equal sign, so it needs to be a dashed line. And then it is greater than, so it needs to shade above the red line, which would be this side. So what would you say about this graph? Since it shades away from each other, the lines are parallel, they've got the same slope. Um, there's not any part of the graph where the shading overlaps or ever will overlap. And so this is one of our zero solutions graph graphs. Zero solutions. Okay. Uh, there's just not a part of the graph where the shading overlaps. So it's zero solutions. All right. One last example to graph, and then we'll move on to something a little bit different. Really kind of the same, but a little bit different. Y is greater than 3, Y is less than 1. So this first one will graph in red. Um, we've already graphed something very similar to this a little bit ago. Um, if it's Y is greater than 3, we've got a Y intercept of 3 and then the slope is 0. So we've got a dotted line where Y is 3. And then our other one here, we've got, oh, and then I've got a shade. So y is greater than 3 means I would shade above. y is less than 1. I would put a dotted line right here where y, the y-intercept is 1. And y is less, so I'd shade below. And this is another zero solutions. Not anywhere where the graph or where the shading overlaps on the graph. All right, for these last two slides, you're going to have to do a couple of these on your assignment today, um, where you're given uh, an, a graph with two different inequalities graphed. The shading is there, and you've got to write the inequalities um, that describe this system of equations. So the first thing we need to do is just write the two inequalities. And all we need to do to write the inequality is we need the slope and we need the y-intercept. It's just like writing an equation. So for this blue, uh, for this one that I've given the blue arrow to here, we need the slope and we need the y-intercept. The y-intercept is right here. The y-intercept is negative 2. And the slope is up to left 1. Up to left 1. So the slope is negative 2 since it's up and then left. Um, so we would just use slope-intercept form, y, and then we're going to have to come up with a symbol to use. We'll do that in just a second, but we've got a negative 2x. The slope is negative 2, and then we've got a negative 2 for the y-intercept, so it's negative 2x minus 2. Now, since it shades below this line, on this side of the line is below it, we need to have a less than symbol. And since it's a dotted line, it does not get the equal sign. So this is our first inequality. All right. Next, for
for this line, it's in red. We will graph the slope and the y-intercept once again. Slope, y-intercept. The y-intercept is right here, and it is 1, 2, 3, 4. y-intercept is positive 4. The slope is up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. So the slope is just 1. So we would write a y, we're going to have to come up with a symbol in just a second. We need a positive 1x, so just x, and then plus 4. Now, since it shades above this line, above would be a greater than symbol. The shading is above that solid line, so it's a, a greater than symbol. And since the line is solid, you've got to have the equal sign with it. So that's the other inequality. All right. Um, we had to write inequalities like this back in Chapter 2. We just didn't do it with two inequalities on the same graph. Um, so really this is, is not that, or not in Chapter 2, but in Chapter 5. So really this is not that new. Um, one more, and then I'll give you the assignment. Um, let's do this one first. So I need the slope and the y-intercept. The y-intercept is right here, and it's 2. The slope then is up 1, 2, 3, over 1, or down 1, 2, 3, left 1. So it's a positive slope. It's a slope of 3. So I would have a y. I would have a 3x plus 2. And since the shading is a... Um, Let's see. Oh, it's this line. Since the shading is below this line, I would need a less than symbol. The line is dotted, so it gets no equal sign. This is the this is the inequality right here. Y is less than 3x plus 2. Now let's write the other one. For this line. Okay. Um, I need a slope. And I need a y-intercept. The y-intercept is 1, 2, 3. And the slope of a horizontal line is 0. So when we put the slope in 0 here, 0 times x just goes away. So we don't have an x term in this inequality, that this blue in here. It would just be y, and then we would need the 3 because the x symbol goes away, or the x term goes away. And since it's above this, uh, this horizontal line, it would need to be greater than. So y is greater than 3. It's really just like this one right here, isn't it? We already had that y is greater than 3. And so it looks just like that one. Um, so that's it for today. You need to be able to um, graph two inequalities on a, on a on a, a, a coordinate plane and find the part of those inequalities where it overlaps, the shading overlaps, and that's your solution. Um, you need to be able to look at these two in, cord, um, inequalities graphed on the coordinate plane and you need to be able to write the system of inequalities that goes with it. Um, it's, it's similar to stuff we've done in the past, so hopefully it won't give you too much trouble today. You have a worksheet today that uh, you need to go ahead and do the whole thing. and. Um, I will be back for first hour on Wednesday, but I'll be out again for fifth hour on Wednesday. So, um, if you're struggling, uh, send me an email or something. We've got a test coming up Friday that you guys, uh, have got to be ready for. So, um, I'll be back in both classes on Thursday to, to get the reviews in for the test. But, uh, if you're struggling, you need to let me know so we can find a time to help you. All right. Good luck today. Thanks. Bye.